Hey guys, welcome back to my workshop and welcome back to Periodic Surf Co. Now, I'm really excited about this video series because we are finally gonna be building one of our SUP kits here on YouTube to kind of take you guys through every step of the way to see if it's something that you guys wanna tackle at home or just enjoy watching the process. The series itself will be broken up into several parts because it is just far too much to fit into one video. So make sure you click that subscribe button and keep checking back to see our new releases as we progress on with this build. Now in this first video, we are gonna go over getting the frame glued up. The frame itself goes together pretty easily, but there's a few things we need to check because well, an SUP is a big thing. And if we don't get the order just right, things may start to get a little bit out of control. So let's go over the actual frame itself. So when your frame arrives, you'll actually get it in the frames that they get cut in, and that's for protection in transit. And it also means that I don't have to get rid of the scrap. So what you'll want to do is just kind of remove the, the tape that is holding the items into the frames and just pop them out. Our kits are all broken up into basically three components. We've got our spine. So on SUP, we have our center spine as well as our side spines. On top of the spines, we have our ribs. Now the ribs are the pieces which run across the board and give it its width as well as its kind of shape. So the last component are the rails. Now the rails look a little bit like the spine but it's a lot thinner and you'll see it has relief all the way through it. There are additional components in the kit so you'll see a whole bunch of square little components which are labeled C2, C1 etc. These are just additional support material on these jigsaw joints. The other components you'll see are a whole bunch of thin strips of polonia which have been cut to 12 by 6 and 6 by 6. This is the additional bracing that goes into the ribs. Now, because we're working with natural timber here, not an engineered man-made product, things can move. So things may get a bit tight or it may get a bit loose. Either way, it's not a big deal because we can fix it, but it does mean before we start putting this thing together, we need to test fit every single joint when it comes to the ribs and spines. So what I'm gonna start doing is uh, I'll start with the center rib and with number one I'm just going to slide it together and that one goes together really nice. So what we're looking for is a slip fit. A slip fit is where it doesn't take any pressure to really get it together but it also doesn't fall out and it's not sloppy. So we know that one is good we can set that aside in the tested pile. If you find that the fit is loose just apply a little bit of water to that area on both sides and that will make those fibers swell up and that fit should be nice again. Don't forget that we have to check both the center and both the sides with both our spines. So I'm going to just focus on the centers and then I'm going to focus on the sides. So here is number three. We can see that that one that one has gone together nicely. So three, I'm gonna say three is good. So the centers are going together really nicely. No tuning needed there. And that's no surprise because this was only cut recently. So it hasn't had much time to change. Now we're gonna start on the side spines. So there, it's, it's a little bit snug, but not too bad. But let's say that yours was tighter than that and it needed a bit of a tune up. Well, we can do it in two ways. So the first way is just a bit of sandpaper. So basically anything that's directly below the slots, we can just sand it lightly and remove a small amount of material. We don't need much. We just need to do a little bit. Then after you do a few strokes, you can just slide it together and test that it's going together nicely. And now you can see that that goes together with no issues at all. The, the other method we can use is actually compression. So here I've just got a, a hammer and what I'm going to do is with the material fully supported on the bench, I'm actually just gonna come in and compress the fibers just below the slot. And what this is going to do, it's just going to compress the fibers, make this thinner, but also when we apply some glue onto that, that's going to make it swell back and it's going to create a nice snug fit. So you do that on both faces. And you can see that that just slides together. And uh, once we put some glue on that, which is going to put some moisture into the timber, things are just going to go together really, really nicely. So with the fitment all good, Let's move on to getting our short components joined together into long components. So I've got my central spine laid out here and here is the support material. So these are both labeled with C2 and I can see a C2 here. So 
There they go. C1, that obviously will go on this C1 joint and the rest of it will go on the S joint. So S stands for side spine, C stands for center spine. So the spines all will go together with a jigsaw joint. So here you can see that we've got C2 and the joint just kind of goes together like so. Then on either side of that jigsaw joint goes a uh, bit of support material. Here we're just going to apply glue to all of the faces which are joining together and we'll just spread it out nice and even. Now we will put glue on both faces. As long as you can see that there is good glue, we should be okay. So that's slotted together. And then we just install the support material either side. So we've just clamped that in place. Everything can't move around and we can just repeat that on the remaining joint and move on. So that's the central spine done and I'm just gonna repeat that on both side spines and uh, it's just the exact same process. So while we have the spines glued up and drying, we can turn our attention to the rails. Now, the thing you'll notice with rails is that you have two identical pieces in profile but they are actually reversed. So you'll see that the lettering is on the top on one and on the bottom on the other. And that's because one is the left side, one is the right side. So to start, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply tape across the joint on the underside. And then we're going to apply glue to the faces, press it together. And we're just gonna put the tape on and stretch it nice and tight. And I'm also gonna do a wrap around the joint just for additional support. So that's that, I'm gonna repeat that for the remaining joints on both sides. So the rib to spine glue up is a really simple process and unfortunately I filmed it with the microphone switched off. So I'm just gonna kind of go over it here and do the footage over the top, hopefully it makes sense. My method here is to lay out every rib in numerical order, so one through to 11 in this case, and also have the spine set up alongside them so everything is laid out clearly. From there, I like to start in the center of the board and work my way out. So I will apply glue to the slot on the spine as well as the two faces directly under the slot and then do the same to the rib with the corresponding number. So in this case, number six. With the glue applied, I will press it together nicely, make sure it's fully seated. And then I'll just lightly spread the squeeze out so that it doesn't clump up and look kind of ugly. Now it's quite important at this stage to remove any squeeze out from the notch that is kind of between the rib and the spine because that receives a strip which is called the spine stiffener once all of the ribs are installed and we don't want any glue to kind of set in there so that we can't get it to press down evenly. So I will then repeat that working my way out from the middle to the ends of the board until every rib is installed. You may also notice that I have the spine sitting up on some clamps. So with all of the ribs glued in place, now we can move to our this central channel here. Now this is the spine stiffener and that is made up of three of the pieces out of the support material. So we've got two full length 12 by sixes that run in the, in the channel. And then we have one which we'll have to trim down to just fill in any of the gaps. So you can see that I've got a mark it here so I'm just gonna trim that off. Now to trim this, obviously a saw is the better option, but just use a sharp knife, like a razor knife, score it all the way around, and then you can just snap it off. So that should now fit in this channel and give us all that support that we need. Then to install, all we have to do is apply glue to this whole channel, press this in, and then clamp it down while it dries. The method that I really like is just using thick rubber bands, which we've cut in half and tying them around the spine. Because these are cheap, you can get a pack of thousands and you've literally got yourself thousands of clamps for a few dollars. With the ribs and spine stiffener installed, uh, it's a good idea to actually dry install, that's to say no glue here, just, just inserting it for the side spines. The reason for that is it will bring everything that is out of square into square, of course, and it will just help with alignment when it comes to gluing this in place. The, the install can be a little bit tricky, but what you're gonna to have to do is basically move up and down the board, getting a little bit at a time inserted. And you know, you're, not, you're not gonna press it so hard that you're forcing anything. We're just trying to get everything to line up nicely so it will insert. 
All right, so once that has dried for a bit, uh, now is the time to actually glue in the side spine. So it's the same process as the dry fit, of course, but this time it's with glue. So you do need to be careful while doing this because if we accidentally side load anything and put stress across the timber, it's quite thin wood. So if we snap it, then that's gonna be a delay uh, when it comes to having to repair that. So getting your glue on the uh, centine can be a little bit tricky, um, but I'm just doing it one side at a time and then kind of getting it into the slot. As long as there's plenty of glue on the faces, on the, uh, the ribs, which are easy to get to, we should be fine. Then here is the fun part, which can turn into stress. Getting everything lined up. But because we had it set there dry, everything should go together a little bit easier this time around. All right, so that is this side done. Now I'm just gonna do the same on that side. Doesn't need any clamps here, but if it did, just use rubber bands tied around the, uh, the, the cross joint there and you'll be laughing. So we're gonna get on with that. Now, you'll notice that on all of the ribs, we have these notches and some of them are shaped like a T and some are just a rectangular notch. That's where all these thin strips come in. What these notches are is just additional bracing for our uh, deck skins to get glued onto and just gives a little bit of extra strength around these high impact areas. Now, anywhere that has the T-shaped notch, like on the edge here, that will receive a six by six millimeter strip that goes into the lower notch and it's followed by the 12 by six mil notch. And that there is a really strong bit of bracing. So once that is glued in place and dry, there will be no flex to that. One thing that's different in our SUPs to our shortboards is that we have a stepped notch or the T-notch which doesn't extend the full length and that's just because it wasn't necessary. So I went ahead and I've laid everything out here and I have trimmed things to length and I've just made sure that anywhere that there is a join it is actually lined up in the middle of a rib. So what I'll do is apply glue to all these notches and then uh, anywhere that there's a T piece, we'll also apply glue to the face of the uh, six by six millimeter strip. Now for clamping these sorts of T sections together, pegs are just the perfect solution. So on the actual uh, joint where it laps the rib, if it's necessary, just use the same clamping method we've used everywhere, and that is tied rubber bands. Now at this stage, it, you can also check that your ribs are, are looking nice and straight across the board, because sometimes being that this is natural timber, it may, may get a bit of a curve to it. So if that's the case, just look down it, you'll be out of sight, see if it's straight, and just give it a quick adjustment if necessary. And in this case, it was only really this one that was out of straight. So we're looking pretty good here. Okay, so that is all of the bracing installed and I just let that dry overnight. One thing that I will stress here is as you're installing all of this bracing, it is really important that you're doing it with no twist in that frame because if you if you glue it in with twist, then you're gonna obviously have a twisted board. So as you're doing this, just make sure you sight down the board and you, you're constantly checking that things are still nice and coplanar or free from twist. So we are super close to moving on with this thing. All we have to do is install the rails and we're done. So I'm just gonna quickly unclamp everything and get onto that. Now the rails just get installed onto the frame like so. So the slots line up with the corresponding rib. So one at the tail, 11 at the nose. But there is one little issue when it comes to the rail and that is the nose. If we were to try and get this nose section to bend around and meet up with the, the actual nose, it's gonna feel really difficult to do so and like this piece of timber will snap and that's because we're working with solid timber and have grain direction. So in the kit, you would have noticed that there's a couple of bending forms. We've got two, two which are labeled with uh, the nose. So these go either side like that and there is also ones for the tail. However, this is just for those people that want to uh, block in their tail with a hollow strip instead of a solid block, which is what we're going to show here. So this is just an option not actually needed. The idea with the bending form is that we actually steam or heat up this section with water and uh, an iron, and that will soften all of the fibers in here and make it bend like there's just nothing to it. So we're gonna heat this up, 
bend it around and have it meet up on the tip of this nose. Now steam bending is really simple and because it's thin timber we don't need anything special. All we have here is a spray bottle of water so we're gonna wet the timber at the top there. We also have a rag which is nice and damp. It's not soaking wet but it's also not dry by any means. And what we're going to do is just wrap that front section of the nose in this wet rag. And to create the steam, we're just gonna iron our timber. So basically a hot iron over this wet rag is gonna create all the steam that we need. Now, one other option which can help in getting even better results is to use tin foil around the rag because that will lock all of the steam in. So you can just wrap the component and then continue to steam it. Once you're confident that the rail is adequately steamed, so nice and hot all the way through, you've got to work somewhat quickly to get this thing back onto the frame here. So we're going to install it dry, so no glue, and we're just going to use our form and a couple of string clamps to hold its shape. So you'll see me work kind of quickly, but don't worry, because we're not using glue, if it feels like it's not hot enough, we can go back and we can change it or try again. That's nice and hot. I'm just gonna hold it in place with a couple of spring clamps like that. And holding the piece which is saying rib against the rib, we're going to start forming this rail. So you can see just how easy that bends now. And with a spring clamp held in place, we can see that the hat is gonna hold its shape really, really nicely. So hopefully you can see from this demonstration here that by steaming this timber, it's gone from something that felt like there was a lot of resistance to something that's quite rubbery. If it doesn't feel like that when you're doing it, you haven't steamed it for long enough, so stop, re-steam it and try again. So I'm just gonna let this side kind of cool down and I'm gonna start working on the other side. Yeah, so for the glue up, I'm just gonna do one side at a time. I'm actually gonna leave the forms in place because we can. I'm not even gonna remove the rail entirely off the strip. So I'm just gonna bump it back enough that I can get glue all around the tabs and the uh, ears. So I'm just gonna squirt some glue onto every tab and then spread it all faces with a brush. Now that we have glue on all our surfaces, it's just a matter of sliding it back along getting everything clamped in place. So here, so this is one of the uh, clamps that I'm prepared. So I hook it on. Make sure we have the right length. Then it's just a matter of tying on the rubber band and then stretch it around and that's all there is to it. Now for the nose, to get this kind of clamped in place, It'll be pretty tricky. I mean, we could tie it in with twine and get it all kind of bound up. But what I'm gonna use is a really good little trick, which is super glue. This is thick CA glue, cyanoacrylate. And I'm just gonna apply it on quite liberally onto the component on both sides. So we have plenty there. Then I'm gonna hold it in place. And then this is instant activator. And that will set pretty much right away. Now you can see that it hasn't it doesn't fill up entirely, but because CA glue is thick, we can actually fill that gap, spray it, and now we got a really good permanent bond. Okay, so that's the first side done. I'm just gonna repeat this for the other side, exact same process. All right, so that is our frame built and we are ready to move on to the next stage. And we'll get onto that in the next video because this video has definitely covered enough. So as you can see, the process itself isn't overly complicated, but it does have a few things that you need to keep in mind and a process that is needed to be followed. Now, of course, we have an additional write-up to accompany this video over on our website. So if you are building along, make sure you check out that article because it has additional short videos of things that were in this video but had to be cut just to keep it to a reasonable length. So make sure you head over to that. Link is in the description below. Now, if you wanna check out our complete range of DIY surfboard kits and SUP kits, head over to the website, which is diysurfboardkits.com.au and uh, check it all out. We ship frames all over the world and very shortly we are even going to be introducing international freight for complete kits. We are just working on the logistics. So like always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Make sure you click that subscribe button, thumbs up, notifications bell, all that stuff so you stay up to date with all of our future videos. Thanks guys, see you next time.